Uh, thank you, choir. Uh, again, uh, I just need to probably explain. Some people wonder why we do these Valentine things. Uh, because for the most part, the whole Valentine celebration is dominated by the world and its values. But we thought we, since people are, are claiming to be celebrating love, that we too would celebrate love and do it uh, the right way. And so we will, uh, that's why we have that Valentine celebration. Even though the target group is young adults, uh, we, uh, other people are welcome. We've had couples there. And uh, just, uh, just feel free to participate and to, to sign in in time so that uh, people have planned for you. Okay, we are continuing with our reflection on the Sermon on the Mount. And today we are doing chapter 5, verse 9 to 12. Blessed are the peacemakers. Lord, we pray that as we reflect on your word, that you would speak uh, in our hearts and help us to indeed be the peacemakers of our time through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, uh, the text says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I just want you to note that in our text, the result of, or the fruit of being a peacemaker is that you'll be called children of God. In other words, peacemakers are only living out their relationship with God. When you are, uh, you, you, you live in relationship with God, this is only a natural expression to be one who is a peacemaker. That verse is, called, is followed by blessed are those who are persecuted for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And there is a link there as we shall find out. Now verse 3 has the same ending as verse 9 uh, but, or rather verse 10 because the poor in for the poor and the poor in spirit the result is theirs is the kingdom of heaven and those who are persecuted for righteousness theirs is the kingdom of heaven you see people who realize their spiritual poverty who realize the the and need for redemption, who realize their need for God's help, reach out to Christ who has paid the price, and they are forgiven. They become partakers of the kingdom. They become a part of the kingdom because they are now made right with God. I appreciate the 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 poem because it highlights. The Christ who pays our price. And so we become partakers of a kingdom, not because of what we've done, but because of uh, what Christ has done. Likewise, peacemakers are people who have found peace in their own lives. As another pastor put it, it is only, only those who daily conquer sin in their own lives who work to bring peace to the civil war in their own hearts. What he's saying is there's a civil in our, in our own hearts. Constantly, the battle for our hearts. It is only those who have conquered that who are ready to help others fight the battle as well. You see, the biggest offense is our offense to God. Man, the sinner, constantly fails to meet the standard of God. Constantly fails fails to meet the standard of God in the way he relates to God, in the way he relates to others, and in the way he relates to his world. So the peacemaker 
is one who has found peace with God firsthand. He is now in relationship with God. It, the sin that separated him from God, the sin that offended God, has been cancelled because Christ has paid for it on, on the cross. The Apostle Paul, Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into the grace that we now stand. That a man has is peace with God, not because of what God has done, but not because of what he has done, but because of what God has done. What he has done is not enough. Because as the text says, all our righteousness is like filthy rags. We are not good enough. We can never be good enough. We are only made good by the grace of God, in which our sins is atoned for at, by Christ at the cross. And we now come on purely because of what Christ has done. The Apostle Paul says something to this in uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. Therefore, in, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has go gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, and he has now committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God was making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, this reconciliation happens between us and God because of Christ, and then it becomes our responsibility to make sure this reconciliation happens with others. And it is so critical because it determines your eternal destiny. And it's after one has been reconciled with God that he's able to be reconciled I, I, genuinely with others. Now, when you read scripture over and over, you find that this reconciliation with God must impact reconciliation with others. Otherwise, even our worship is not possible. I find one of the challenging texts is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. If we took this literally, many of us at, at offering time we would be walking out of the church. Or we would, uh, those who are husbands and wives may be stopping for a while and talking to their wives first. Because the text says, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and then you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar, First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Wow. That this is there's something that it, this takes away the meaning of worship. If I'm living in, I'm not reconciled with my brother or my sister, with somebody. He said again, again in Matthew 18, 15 to 20. If your brother or sister sins... Go and point out their fault. Just between the two of you, if they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take, over, take one or two others along so that everything, every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they ref still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refu refuse to listen if, even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or tax collector. Verse 18. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you agree about anything they ask for, it will be done by, for them by my Father in heaven. For two, where two or three gather in my name, 
there am, I am with them. Now, most of us like to quote verse 20. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Now, you have to appreciate that the context of this verse is right relationships. That brothers who are helping others, brothers and sisters who are reconciled with each other and helping other people be reconciled to God. It is in that context that it says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them. And if they ask anything in my name, it will be done for them. It is in the context of reconciled relationships. So peace with God and peace with one another. This is echoed again in Hebrews 12, 14 to 15. Strive for peace with all men and for holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble, and by it become, but many become defiled. You see, when we have been reconciled to God and are reconciled to others, we are then helping other people to find reconciliation with God. We become peacemakers when we ourselves have found peace with God and with one another. That's a, that's a moment for reflection. It's a moment for prayer. That if you're walking in the body of in the fellowship of believers, that they, they, it is almost inevitable that you will step on somebody's foot or somebody will step on your foot or somebody will rub you the wrong way. And it is possible to, keep, to allow that to continue to be in the air and then make our worship experience meaningful, meaningless. Now, I had never really thought about how verse 9 uh, 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 is related to verse 10 and 11 until I spend some time looking at this text. Because verse 9 that invites us to be peacemakers is followed by blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when they insult you persecute you force to say all kinds of evil against you because of me rejoice and be glad because great is your word in heaven for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you so i was thinking okay what made the prophets be persecuted you know what they were trying to do? They are trying to help people find reconciliation with God. They are trying to make, get people to make peace with God. So peacemakers are not necessarily popular. To help a person realize their need for peace with God means you have to point out that they are sinners, they are imperfect people who need God's grace. And not many people want to be reminded that they are not right not many people want to be reminded that they are not okay so therefore the gospel is a, in its own sense offensive so the possibility of it triggering persecution is very high And yet you cannot walk away from it. Proverbs 27, 6 says, Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an, an enemy multiply kisses. So that to be a peacemaker, one must be painfully honest. We cannot afford to be like the prophets in Jeremiah's day who were prophesying peace. You see, God's judgment was due God's people had offended God. They had sinned and, and the judgment was coming. And the prophets kept saying, peace, peace, peace. And Jeremiah says to them, 
They dressed the wounds of my people as though they were not serious. Peace, peace they say when there is no peace. Yeah, the, 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 the doctors and nurses will tell you in, the, in, their, in this auditorium if somebody has a serious wound you dress it like a serious wound you're not you don't power you don't, you don't, you're not casual about a serious wound you treat it like a serious wound and Jeremiah is saying the, the prophets of his day were saying peace, peace they were, they were massaging the wound And the truth can be painful. And history is full of God's people who are persecuted for seeking to draw people back to God, to create peace with God. Because uh, peace with God must be preceded by a message of, of, of judgment and therefore repentance and then peace. So peacemakers are people who are, have to be honest to declare God's truth that offends people and hopefully brings them back to God. Second, as I thought about uh, this role of peacemaking, is peacemakers must be develop communication skills. I've seen many people who seek to correct others but whose approach is very destructive and I've been part of church for many years and I've seen people who in fact through the years when somebody is involved in public sin they are almost always not going to find a place in the church ever. Because nobody knows how to, to combine. Not many people in the church know how to combine grace with the seriousness of God's law. Our God is a God of justice. And sin will be judged. But our God is also a God of grace. He invites sinners back to himself. And we in the church are not always good in managing that. What of Proverbs says, the one who acknowledges, who has knowledge, uses words with the restraint. And whoever has understanding is even tempered. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. So people who use their tongues appropriately in dealing with other people's faults are not that many. A gentle, anger, a gentle answer turns away well wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of fools gushes out folly. Proverbs 29, 11. Fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. The ability to to challenge evil, to challenge sin with wisdom is important, an important skill for peacemakers. If, if, you, if there's a situation that you feel God is calling you to sp step into, pray for guidance in how to do that well. And lastly, peacemakers must trust God. What do I mean? The Apostle Paul puts it this way. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. What the Apostle Paul is saying is you cannot really create peace, only God can. You cannot guarantee that if you're using, you're doing something peaceful, that the other person will respond peacefully. If you're trying to resolve a conflict, you cannot guarantee that the other person is also interested in resolving conflict. So you have, must learn to trust God. The Apostle Paul says that 
the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24-26. But must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. It says in verse 25, opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape the trap of the evil who has taken them captive to do his will. That is really God who ultimately works in the hearts of men. So peacemakers must understand that they, they don't have it all in their hands, that some of this is a, is a, is a work of God. Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 to 8, that I planted the seed, Apollos watered it. But God has ma been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and those who, the one who waters have one purpose, that they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. In minister we plant, but it is really law that makes growth possible. This means that in this business of peacemaking, helping people be reconciled with God with each other, we do our job, but we must start to go to do the rest. This is important for everybody in this room who is active in the, in the lives of other people. Because sometimes you speak into a life of somebody and they don't want to know. Or they act like, who are you to talk to me? Huh? Somebody has told me as the today's uh, saying goes. Sometimes you can invest in, in ta time in people's lives and wait for fruit and not see it for a long time. It is possible. Is the young man currently working in Dubai? He was one of our Bible study leaders many years ago. And he was disrespectful for a number of our leaders in the church and uh, was not working right with the, some of the sisters. So I had a meeting with him and tried to talk to him. And he said to me, <laughs> I am, I'm an adult. I'm no longer a little boy. In other words, don't tell me what to do. So I asked him to stop teaching our young people. And he continued to participate on the periphery, or to, to be in the church on the peripherals for some time. Then he went away. Sometimes, sometime last year he was in the country and he came to see me. And he said, thank you for speaking into our lives through the years. My last encounter with him was not a pleasant one. And just as I was thinking about this, we plant, but it's a road that makes the what? The seed grow. If God challenges you this week to speak into somebody's life, Understand, it doesn't entirely depend on you. The Apollos watered, eh? a Paul planted, Apollos watered, and then God made it grow. So, today, in today's message, the invitation in the Sermon on the Mount is to be peacemakers. Three ways to apply this. First of all, that you individually are reconciled to God. There's peace between you and God. That's the first responsibility. That as you walk out of this service, you want to be asking yourself, am I reconciled to God? Is there peace, peace between me and God? Have I surrendered my life to him? Is there something in my life that is not right? that I need to bring before the cross. That is our first responsibility as we think about the call to be peacemakers as we are instructed, uh, as we are invited in our text. 
The second application, is there somebody who I need to be reconciled with? Because peacemakers are first reconciled to God, but they are reconciled to others. And then the third application for our text is that you are seeking to help other people to be reconciled to God and to be reconciled to others. Is there somebody that God is putting on your heart that you need to be helping to understand that they need God, they need to be reconciled to God? If that becomes your lifestyle, that in your daily life, you, you're seeking to be reconciled to God, you are seeking to, recon to be reconciled to others, you are helping other people be reconciled to God and to others, the promise is, yours is, Wanji. Verse 10. The promise is, yours is, the what? The kingdom of heaven. Okay, verse 10. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. That is a promise. If the application, please put verse 10 there. Okay. The application for these Three, you are reconciled to God, you are reconciled to other people, you are helping other people be reconciled to God. The promise is yours is the kingdom of heaven. So, as we get out of here, we want to be a people who, are, who, are, who live in the promise of the kingdom of heaven because we seek to be reconciled with God daily. We are seek to be reconciled to other people and we're seeking to, other peop to help other people to be reconciled to God and to others. Heavenly Father, we pray that in this simple message, which is at the center of what the gospel is about, we pray that you help each one of us to leave it out this week so that we, we will indeed be king, uh, kingdom uh, citizens. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.